you've mined, harvested, and foraged your way through the deadliest terrain. Now it's time to kick back and relax. In Guild Wars 2, End of Dragons, you'll learn how to gather a new resource. Fish. Always pack your fishing pole for quiet, contemplative moments wherever you find water. Keep an eye out for fishing holes to hook more impressive catches. Your real adventures begin out on the water. With your personal skill, you can venture straight to the best fishing holes. Or just hang out with up to four friends. Haul your catch back to shore, and chefs can use it to prepare delicious new seafood dishes. Whether you're looking for peace and quiet or valuable resources, Tyria's fish will never be safe from you again. Nick, why don't you start us off with how you begin fishing, how you get your first fishing gear, and all that good stuff. Yeah, for sure. So basically, um, very similar to the way you get raptors within Path of Fire, uh, within this expansion, we, um, we wanted to have fishing be something that you could unlock pretty much right off the bat. So uh, as you progress through the initial parts of the story um, within ch the first chapter, at some point, um, once you've completed uh, specific instances, you're going to just be able to unlock fishing right off the bat. And it'll allow you to, you know, um, it'll reward you with your first fishing rod, you know, and a starting like lure, as an example, uh, to make sure that you can just go out into the world and start whenever you want, just toss it in there and get to, get to fishing. Um, I think that, um, you know, uh, they're of course going to be like the base level ones, but something to note is that with fishing rods specifically, uh, they do not have any durability, which is um, different to other kind of resource node gathering tools that you would see within the game, like the mining picks or the sickle. Mm -hmm. um, so with fishing rods specifically, the fishing rod will not break. Um, we do have charges for the lures and the bait, mm -hmm. um, but that's because they have different tiers and things like that, which we'll see a little bit later. Awesome. Yeah. All right, so why don't we first, let's go through the fishing mastery line so you all can see what the fishing masteries are and you'll have a little bit of context for what we talk about as we're fishing. The first one in the fishing mastery line that you're going to unlock is fishing hole master and that gives you faster catches and triple XP at fishing holes. The second one is angler sense, which gives you a, which unlocks a skill that detects nearby fishing holes. I'm going to show you on my map. This detects nearby fishing holes and lights them up on the map so you can find where the fishing holes are. You can see that right down here in front of Nick. There are shore fish, 471 away. Uh, the third one is fishing on a full tank. This gives you plus 50 fishing power if you are nourished. Fishing power is a new stat that is going to come in with this mastery line that grants a higher chance of catching rare fish and makes fishing a little easier in difficult regions. So, The fourth one is master caster. That increases your maximum fishing range. And the final one is Local Legend. Fishmongers and fishing merchants in Cantho will give you exclusive selections. With that said, let's go fishing. Uh, fishing nodes like this one that we are standing in front of now have the best chance of giving good rewards and the highest rarity fish. You can fish anywhere in the game world that there is water though. Um, fishing is not only in End of Dragons, it's going to be throughout the game world, and that means also in the water in your guild halls. Um, let's get started. Nick, why don't you run us through how to fish? For sure. Um, so basically, uh, as I mentioned earlier, very similar to um, very similar to other areas, you want to make sure that you can equip things like your um, your rod and your lures and your bait, um, and you can just do that right from your inventory. Uh, but the way that uh, you actually access your rod is a bit different. So, uh, you know, we introduced the novelties uh, button. <laughs> I'm like trying to figure out what the right name is for it, but button um, on the bottom right under the um, under the mount selection. Um, but now we have another button under the swap weapon select um, that is specifically for fishing and uh, summoning your skiff. 
So what happens is when you click on the start fishing one, it'll actually give you your fishing rod and give you the ability to utilize skills. In this case right now, we have cast line, and um, as Ruby mentioned before, we have the angler sense on your fishing rod. Uh, whenever you choose to cast line, it will give you this little bobber that you'll see, and um, it just kind of shows you where you'll be able to put it. Uh, as you can see, on terrain, you won't be able to put it, so it turns red, and in the water, it will turn the appropriate color blue. Uh, once you actually uh, put it out there, it'll do a quick animation, and what you'll see is that the bob will show up. Um, as you can see, mine over here, it's currently sitting there, and whenever it splashes with the with the water ripples, that's when you know that there is a fish on the line. So I'm going to wait for mine, and then you click on one, and what happens is that then this UI appears, where there is a bar that fills up to success. Uh, there is this uh, yellow thing called the sweet spot, and then this little green thing we call the fish marker. So what happens is you can use your two and three buttons to uh, keep the sweet spot on the fish marker, and what happens is as you continue to keep doing that, it will build up this bottom bar, which is your success bar. And then once that has filled up completely, uh, what you'll see is that you will get the fish and you'll have succeeded in fishing. Um, and that's pretty much the, the overarching way of being able to do it. Um, just as other uh, crafting things, you know, uh, with, within this game, uh, with these fish, you will actually be able to uh, use them as crafting uh, reagents and things like that, uh, and materials. So what happens is whenever you click on the fish after you've caught it, you will f um, fillet the fish, and you will get crafting materials that you, then you can use to cook, and uh, also like trade into uh, fish uh, NPCs, fishing NPCs, and things like that. I'm sorry, um, I'm struggling over here. No, you're, you're good. It, it, it can it can be a little a little tricky sometimes. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much it, right? You've got your um, you've got your fishing mini game, and then you've got the ability to actually do things with the fish once you've caught them. Yeah. All right. Um, fish are also part of collections. There are fishing collections all around the world. These are repeatable collections. The first time you finish one of the fishing collection, it will give you achievement points and a, another reward that we're not going to tell you about quite yet. And then subsequent completions will give you more of that reward. Um, you'll find out eventually. It's not just that we're never going to tell you. Uh, I do have a couple of fishing collections to share with you as a little preview today. Uh, Xing Jie Fisher is one of the ones, one of obviously the first ones that we will come to. And I wanted to share uh, Shiver Peaks Fisher is another one that's available. I kind of like this one because uh, somebody, John, got a little <laughs> punny with it. So you have fish in there like Lornar's Bass and Beacon's Perch. Um, those are, I just like puns. They're there, dumb and I love them. them. There's nothing wrong with a good yeah. pun. So we've been fishing from shore mm -hmm. here, and I think I have fished this node out while you were talking, but that is not the only way to do it. You can also fish from your skiff. So let's talk about that. Uh, Nick, do you want to walk us through how you get your first skiff? For sure. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, contrary to how you get fishing, um, with the skiffs themselves, it's more like how you would uh, get other mounts within Path of Fire, um, like the skimmer or the jackal, they had hearts that you would utilize the jackal or the skimmer in, like rentable versions. And once you've completed it, you would have the ability to unlock the skimmer or the jackal. Um, with, it, with, uh, with this expansion, you do the exact same thing with skiffs. So uh, there is a heart uh, specifically within Xingjie that once you enter and complete the heart, you will gain access to, uh, to your own skiff. Then you can utilize across the board. Um, something to note, though, is that we are not showing that heart today um, because of the fact that it does have narrative tie-ins, and we want to make sure that we don't spoil those things for you all. Yeah. yeah. All right, so once you have your skiff, you can summon it one of two ways. We're going to show you. The first one is from shore, and this one is kind of fun because you can set the direction of how, how and where you want your skiff to be pointing when you get it in the water. You can just see as I'm turning it, you have the directional arrows showing you. So once you have it where you want it, I, I don't want to run over Nick. It's okay, I'm back <laughs> I'm sorry. No, it's like, all good. You also don't want to drop a boat on your friend's head. It's not going to hurt them, but it is kind of rude. So I'm going to try to avoid that. So once you've got that set, drop it in the water. 
And one quick thing, this is the Xingjie Dragon Boat Skiff Skin. If you have pre-purchased the Deluxe or Ultimate Editions of End of Dragons, this is what you're getting. Um, it's a little different than the picture because I had, I played fun with dye. Um, you can also summon it from the water wherever you are, and Nick is going to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Mine's not as, mine's not as pretty as yours, but I think it has some charm. I honestly. kind of love it. Um, John was talking earlier about how he made his look like it was covered in algae by the dye that he used. So I like the variety. Um, I'm having fun with my big aqua colored theme boat. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so let's go through the skiff masteries real quick. So again, you have context and you know what all you're going to be unlocking and you understand what you're looking at when we go through this. First one that you will unlock for skiffs is full throttle. This gives you the ability to go faster in your skiff. Next one is Depth Charges, which is the one that I super like. If you are just trying to get somewhere, enemies approach, you can drop a Depth Charge and sink them to get them out of the way. Uh, speed Boost gives you a short burst of speed. Fishing Party is cool. While you're on your skiff, you and your party receive additional fishing power equal to the number of catches from fishing nodes that you make. And finally, the last one is Reinforced Hull. This gives plus 5,000 HP to your skiff. Um, somebody has called target on me, and I'm very afraid. <laughs> <laughs> so what, let's all hop I, into um, the skiff. I am the captain. You are the captain. Um, I ran us aground earlier, so this should be interesting. Um, let's go over more details and do some fishing. Nick, why don't you walk us through what else is going on here? Everybody is very excited to for, with me behind the wheel again. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so basically, uh, what you're seeing right now is that our entire party is on the skiff. Um, with these skiffs, uh, the max amount of individuals that you can actually have on them is going to be five, which is your entire party size, and that is including the driver. Um, what you'll probably notice, though, from my perspective, is that there's this giant rainbow of different icons here. Uh, the reason for that is that anybody who is a passenger in the boat actually has the ability to uh, have different emotes that they can use as they're going through. Um, and that's just that way you know people have the ability to do some fun stuff while they're sitting, while they're sitting on the boat being driven around. Um, but there is also a functional reason for it as well, which is uh, the turbo mastery that Ruby had mentioned earlier, where it's basically like a nitrous boost for your, for your skiff. Um, whenever your uh, party members utilize those emote skills, what it does is it completely refills the stamina bar that gets utilized with that, which means that you can just keep on like pumping the turbo boost as much as you want. Um, if we you know. want to, if we want to look at mine just real quick, we can yeah. we can show what that looks like. Yeah. All right, turbo. I need people to emote. Yeah. Thank you. Also, as Ruby mentioned, these icons are not uh, these are these icons are not final because I know they like <laughs> they look very similar right now compared to like on your on your bar versus my bar, but they all are different skills. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's so you know that's pretty much it. We can also so what I'm going to do real quick is I'm actually going to dismount <laughs> and be right. left left to drown. No. Uh, and the the reason for that is so that <laughs> way if you, uh, what we can you what we can showcase is that players actually have the ability to swap seats whenever there's one that's open. Um, if there are no open seats, the, you won't be able to swap around. But um, when there is an open seat, you can you can kind of move around to like for people who want to sit in the front, want to sit in the back, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, another thing that is really interesting about skiffs specifically is that you actually have the ability to anchor your skiff, which is something that's a bit newer with this expansion, because what that does is it actually uh, generates a party-specific collision within any part of the world. And what that means is that when the owner anchors their skiff, players can actually run around on it like it's just a normal platform. Um, what's also really cool about this is that yeah. it's a bit uh, <laughs> troll-proof in that sense because, like, uh, if the person, if there's anybody that's not in your party, they don't have the ability to like hop onto the boat. They don't have the ability to run their boats into yours, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but there's also like some other functional reasoning for for why we have it based around your party. And that uh, has to do with the tie-in to fishing, more specifically. Um, so we wanted to kind of blend these two uh, you know, features together in, as best as we could. And the way that we did that was by having fishing parties, right? So um, once your uh, skiff is anchored, you have the ability to fish off of the sides 
And whenever somebody successfully fishes from a node, they will get a buff uh, called Fish Party, if I'm not mistaken. I am, um, I am fishing right now to try to get that up and running, so yeah, I will if also. I can stop struggling with my fishing pole long enough, we can... I'm, I'm sure that one of us will succeed. Probably. Yeah. Yay, I got it! Okay, All so right. as you can see on the bottom right, it's called Fishing Party, and basically the way that Fishing Party works is that it increases the fishing power that you have um, per, per stack of the buff, and it's like a three times multiplier, so for each, uh, for each one, you're, I think it's like multiplying whatever your base value was by three. And currently, uh, the max stack size is like 99 stacks, so you and your party can just like go from node to node, get up a huge amount, and just be absolute fishing legends, uh, which is pretty fantastic. Um, I think another thing to note actually from this is that if you look, uh, so this one's called Shorefish, and there's a Shorefish node, um, and that's because like uh, we wanted to make sure that it wasn't just specifically you had to fish from skiffs. So like uh, you just saw me cheat a little bit there, but. Um, there are some nodes, like short, short fish nodes, which you can fish from uh, without needing to utilize your skiff. You can just go to wherever there is land, wherever there is a thing, and then toss the line into there. Um, there are also offshore nodes, and those ones specifically are going to need you to utilize your skiff because of the fact that they're just like in the middle of the ocean, right? In the middle of deep water. Um, what's also really interesting about those things is the fact that uh, each one has different kinds of fish that you can catch from it. So uh, the shore nodes have different, uh, you know, fish that you can acquire um, than the than the deeper, than the, sorry, than the offshore nodes. And what that allows for is just a bit more diversity <laughs> in each area. Sorry, I was like, hey, let's have a boat race. And okay. I'm sorry, I've gone completely off script, but you know, whatever. Uh, so something else to note is that um, if uh, you can be a little trolly with your friends because like, so Tracy just parked her boat and because it's party specific collision, if Ruby tries to drive into uh, her boat, what happens is that- <laughs> I can't. It's, it, it, it runs into it, right? So um, you do have the ability to be a little goofy <laughs> with your friends, right? And if they're going like full turbo speed, you can, if you're in the same party, just quickly park yours in front of them ah. and then like have them crash or like ramp up off of it. And it, it allows for some really interesting uh, experiences um, just your friends that you partied with yeah I think I think yeah okay. but just your friends that you partied with <laughs> I think that's pretty much it for all of the extra details for now though I've, I've I think I got through all things. of them yeah D uh, did we talk about when you raise the anchor everybody has to sit down because oh, safety. We, did, we did not yeah um, so uh, with this specifically because of the fact uh, that you know you have a party and you're trying to keep them all within a specific boat we wanted to try to re uh, remove as many edge cases edge case situations and edge case bugs as possible. So because of that, um, once the boat gets uh, unanchored, it checks to see how many uh, players are within the area that are part of the party, and then it sits them down, right? It's just like, everybody, sit down. We're driving, we're moving. Hands and arms Seat inside belts. the boat. Yeah. Seat belts. Safety first. All right, I do want to call out one just little thing on mm -hmm. mine, and you can see on my screen, Mark, if we can look at mine, there is a cool little animation deal um, let me turn my boat around. Where if you turn, my character is pulling the rudder and she's leaning and it's just a fun little animation thing that I appreciate you all on the dev team thought about. All right, I think we have fished that node out. I'm just checking to see if there's another one nearby. Uh, you, what you could do is you could use the, uh, the mastery skill. The angler sense. Yeah, that's yeah, what I was angler doing. Sense. Um, don't yeah. look at my screen right now because <laughs> because I'm doing possible, things. Hey, possible things, yeah. all right, I found another fishing node, and uh, I'm gonna go there. What's really cool though is that with Angler Sense, uh, I think John wanted us to also mention this as well. Is that it's kind of I think if I remember correctly, the first one of the first masteries uh, that actually has that skill show up in multiple areas. You can use it while you have your fishing rod out, but you can also use it from the skiff itself. So there's a bit of a oh, dual yeah. usage there um, whenever you have it unlocked. But Angler Sense, I think specifically, you only need to unlock it from the fishing line, and then you'll get that skill in both areas. No, I lost it. All right, so that is the basics of skiffs and fishing. I am excited to see everybody's party boats and how they're tooling around emoting and how people use fishing and skiffs. Make your make your make your skiff races. I want to see. Um, 
I'm just watching to see what Nick's doing. Yeah, actually, uh, if we if we want to show showcase this is real quick as well. Um, yeah. Whenever so, what's really interesting as well is that uh, if we all anchor our skiffs, why does it say I'm moving? Oh, it's because I'm too close to Tracy. One second. Or am I too close to you? Uh, do I don't thing. know, but stop moving. <laughs> why? Anchor, we have like the dance party boat I'm, over here in Tracy's. I'm not moving. Okay, so you know, as as Ruby mentioned, development branch, some stuff happens. Uh, it's very true. There we go. Okay, so like, what's really cool is that you could basically like in maps build bridges, barges, right? You can like we can put oh, all our right. boats right next to each other and like have like a little boat barge party. Uh, in fact, let me actually try to see if I can get mine in the middle of y'all's. Um, okay. Thread the needle, as they say. I'm actually. Uh, did we did we talk about the different speeds um, as well? I think that it was probably mentioned within the mastery area. We did within the mastery area, but there's a little more to it. So yeah. why don't we look at yours and you can show them off on yours. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I'm actually yeah, but as 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 seen, like you can park all the boats next to each other, run across them. Like you can create these party specific uh, platforms. It's really interesting. But um, what's really cool? Going for a ride. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, is that uh, <laughs> there are th uh, three speed settings, and the third one gets unlocked with the mastery line. But you've got, you know, you've got your slow cruise, and you've got your moderate clip, which increases the speed a little bit, right? And then you've got your like full throttle, and full throttle is just like, hey, we're 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 going we're going fast, we're zooming, as they say, right? And then of course you can utilize your turbo boost, and it's just it just turns into like you know. Some some dynamic control. I'm over here like spam cheering to keep <laughs> your to keep your energy bar full. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you can like so like as you see, Ruby is using her emotes, and it's just emote, emote, emote. Yeah, with multiple party members, you can chain emote just for an endless turbo boost. Mm-hmm. And it's it's all it's all a grand time, honestly. All um, right. So that oh, okay. Still not as bad as what I did earlier. I just like tried to drive right up onto an island before. Toggle anchor. All there right, so go. I think that covers uh, fishing skiffs, how you get them, all of the mastery lines, all of the abilities, where you can fish, fishing collections, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. I hope that answered a lot of your questions. We are excited to see what all you do with these new features in End of Dragons.